So let us see how we can create a data set from RDD. We need to use case classes that comes as part of Scala to create data sets. So it is not as straightforward as we have been doing thus far. It is a bit uh, different. We need to create a case class if you want to create RDD and then create data set out of that RDD. So first we need to uh, read data from the file the way which we have seen earlier. So once again, I am creating a variable called input based directory, mntc data retail underscore db orders, actual input based directory should end here and then val orders equal to sc dot text file input base directory and then orders now orders is of type rdd each element in that rdd is of type string we can actually preview the data by saying orders dot first which will give us the first record now if i want to create a data set data set is a uh, sibling of or twin sibling of data frame both are almost same i will explain you the minute differences once we create the data set don't break your head if you uh, if you want to know the, uh, the difference immediately it is also nothing but a data frame okay uh, but there are some differences which we'll be seeing very soon so as we have rdd if you have to create a data set typically we have to create a row object of type case class and for that we need to have a case class once we process the data we will be dividing this data into four fields one is already second one is order date third one is order customer id and fourth one is order status based on that we need to create a case class so what is a case class here it is a special type of class which comes as part of scala where when you actually define the variables it will actually get us get us and set us out of the box first let us define class let me name it as order and let me give the field names as order id int order date string order customer id int and order status string so this is how you typically create a class in uh, scala you don't have to specify constructor and many other things you don't even need to have curly braces unless you want to write the code now you can actually use java p i hope it will work here hyphen p order and you can see what is happening internally it just got a constructor and that constructor have four arguments these are nothing but constructor arguments there are no class variables these are all constructor arguments as these are just constructor arguments we can build the object but we will not be able to either read the attributes or we will not be able to set the attributes to actually make them uh, uh, make it possible to read the attributes once the uh, object is created we have to define these class or uh, class constructor arguments as variables it can be mutable variable or it can be immutable variable by default their constructor arguments however if we specify val it will be immutable variable which is final if you specify val they are mutable variables so if you define the variables as var for each of these constructor arguments if we convert them to variables using where they'll be both getters as well as setters along with class attributes for these four uh, names which we are passing here if we do not specify where or well they are nothing but constructor arguments there will be no class attributes at all in this case we have specified all four as where which are nothing but mutable class attributes if you hit enter and then if you run java p you can see it has created four class variables which are private and then for each of these variables there is a getter and setter and the naming convention for getter and setter in scala is a a bit different whatever is your variable name that will be your getter so there will be a function with that variable name you can see here it is a function and it is returning integer so this is the getter for class variable order id same is the case with order date for class variable order date this is the getter and when it comes to setter the naming convention will be like this order id or the class variable name underscore dollar eq the reason why they have done this is we can invoke this function by saying uh, the object name dot order id equal to and we can pass a value to it i will demonstrate and then you will be able to understand so first let me create a variable called o it is of type order so let me say order here and let me pass the arguments for the constructor which are nothing but one for order id and then 2013 july 25th is the order date and then 100 for the customer id and then close it for order status now you can actually access the elements by saying o dot order id it is one order date it is 2013 july 25th if you do not specify the uh, constructor arguments as class variable using val or val you will not be able to read like like this once the object is created okay that being said now if you want to set a value already o dot order id is written as one let's say i want to set it to two then one what you can do is you can say order id do underscore dollars equal to two this is one approach which is uh, not practical the order dollar eq will be changed as e equal to um, when it actually runs so instead of saying underscore dollar equal to we can actually say equal to like this and even the brackets are optional while invoking the function and you can say o dot already equal to 2 now if you actually see the 
o dot order id the order id is set to 2 so the setters are defined like this so that we can actually invoke the functions using standard assignment operator like this okay that's why the setters are defined like this so whenever you specify where as part of uh, defining the class for all the constructor arguments it actually get us setters and get us the getters are typically based on the field names and the setters are uh, field name underscore dollar equal to so that we can assign uh, the values while invoking the function using standard equal to operator in scala each and every operation is a function and each and every uh, variable is a object keep that in mind okay so that being said when we actually create the class with uh, where it has created the class variables and it has created the getters and setters automatically for you along with the constructor and there's boilerplate code that will be available for you whenever you create this class however if you define a case class instead of class now let's say this one is case class not just class so the same thing i have changed it to case class and if you look at the output of the java p and if you say order here it has lot more code than what we have seen earlier more importantly it implements two interfaces one is product and second one is serializable so when you say case class it is automatically serializable for you most of the java developers might be aware of what is serializability others might not be available i will try to explain a bit on this very important concept real quick so whenever you create a object using any object oriented programming language it will actually create object in memory okay once it is in memory you process it you do whatever you want and then whenever garbage collection is uh, garbage collection happens the objects in the memory will be garbage collected and memory will be um, released however instead of just processing in memory if you want to pass that object to a file system and write it as a byte stream or if you want to uh, uh, convert into a byte stream and pass it over the network in that scenario your object's life span is beyond the scope of jvm's memory so if you have to write anything out of jvm's memory uh, with respect to objects they have to be made serializable so when we say case class automatically that functionality is available and when it comes to spark and all we have to pass the output of one stage to another stage or output of map task to flat map or reduce so on and so forth as data has to be uh, written into memory or files or data has to be transferred over the network whatever structure we try to use should be serializable that's why uh, we tend to use case class rather than regular classes if you have to create any object oriented concepts or any class objects while data processing we don't use classes that often when it comes to spark if we have to create any uh, object oriented structure the one which will be using is nothing but case class because the logic to serialize it is already available for you and also you can see that as we have defined case class with uh, where for all the variables you can see class variables um, for those uh, constructor arguments and also you can see the getters and setters for each and every every variable and also as it implement product there are product related apis also such as product element product prefix so on and so forth we will see those things in a moment on top of these things it also gives a special api called apply so when it comes to apply we don't need to invoke that we just have to say the class name or object name and then you can pass the arguments for the function and it will invoke apply automatically for you so i will explain that in a moment first i will be creating the object here even with case class you should be able to create the object okay and uh, you should be able to read the elements you should be able to set the elements like this also uh, if you want to invoke apply so let's say i want to override all these values in one shot what i can do is i can say val o1 equal to o dot apply and we can actually copy these things i will be changing only first value and paste it here and hit enter okay i think uh, i know why it is not working in this case we have to say something like this the reason why you can uh, the apply is not working here is when we actually create a case class there will be two classes created for you one is class which we are seeing here and the other one is object or a companion object object and that companion object also will be named after the class name itself and that companion object will have the apply okay and companion object is the one which will have static functions like main apply etc as the companion object have apply in this case you see i did not specify new i just said order of the values and i am able to create the object so that apply method internally uh, use new order and it will create the object of whatever class we are trying to use to create the object so it is same as invoking the apply method like this okay both are same so when we create case class it not only gi uh, gives us the getters and setters for our class uh, variables and also make it serializable but also it actually uh, provide additional api such as apply as part of companion object so we will be using this approach to actually convert our data which is in the string format into order objects and then we will try to invoke a function called 2ds to create the dataset